and more. So again, if you have any questions specific to your situation, please don't hesitate to contact us after the webinar is over. First, let me tell you a little bit about Test Innovators. We are the leading test prep platform for the ISEE and SSAT. Currently, we have helped over 70,000 students get into the most selective schools. Here are a few of the schools that students who have used our platform have been admitted to across the country. Here at Test Innovators, we've spent years helping students with test prep, and based on that experience, here's what we know. First, standardized test taking is a skill that you can master. It's very different from other types of tests, and like all skills, you need to learn and practice in order to improve. When you've mastered this skill, you'll be able to demonstrate all of your knowledge most effectively on the test. Next, we know that advances in technology make it far easier to prep for the SSAT. Technology allows you to identify your strengths and weaknesses and then provides the best tools to prepare efficiently and effectively. These two tenets form the foundation of the tools and resources we've developed to help students prepare for the SSAT, and they also inform the strategies which I'll be sharing with you in today's webinar. Over the years, we've developed some key strategies for success on the test. They've come from working with admissions departments, feedback from students and tutors, and data collected in our system. So with that, let's get started with today's topic. Today we're going to be talking about the SSAT score report. The SSAT score report includes all of the information that you and the schools need to measure your students' performance on each section of the SSAT. The one section that is not included on the score report is the writing sample, which is unscored. First, let's just review SSAT scoring. The score that you receive on your SSAT test is not just based on the questions you got right. Rather, you receive one point for each correct answer, zero points for each unanswered question, and lose one quarter of a point for each wrong answer. All right, let's take a look at the official score report. The score report is broken down into several parts. There's about you, the test you took, your scores, and the test question breakdown. We'll go over each of these parts together. First, let's look at the about you section. Fairly self-explanatory, but there's a couple of things to make sure. The section contains your personal information, so make sure that your name and date of birth are correct and also check to ensure that you registered using your current grade, not the grade you're trying to get into, um, which determines the test level that you took and the comparison or norm group for the SSAT percentiles. So just double check that information on the About You section. The next section is the test you took. This tells you where you took the SSAT, when you took it, and what level of the test you took. So on this section of the score report, just check, check to make sure that you took the elementary level SSAT if you're in grades three to four, middle level SSAT if you're in grades five to seven, and the upper level SSAT if you're in grades eight to 11. Um, it's very important to double check this because there is a different score scale for each level. All right, moving on, now let's look at the scores. So in this section, your scores, you can see all the information to determine how well you scored on the test. The first part uh, is the scaled scores. Scaled scores differ across all levels. Um, on the elementary SSAT, the scaled scores range from 300 to 600, with a total scaled score range of 900 to 1800. For the middle level SSAT, section scaled scores range from 440 to 710, with a total scaled score range of 1320 to 2190. And on the upper level SSAT, scaled scores range from 500 to 800, with the total score range of 1500 to 2400. So this scaled score, which differs across the level, is the result of some transformation 
which is applied to the raw score. The raw score is just generated from that one point for each right answer, zero points for each unanswered question, and then subtract a quarter of a point for each wrong answer. The purpose of scaling the raw score is to report the scores for every test taker on a consistent scale. No single test score provides a perfectly accurate estimate of your proficiency. So there's also a personal score range provided to emphasize the possibility of score differences if you took the SSAT again. So that's what the range is all about. So there's scaled score and we see the score, the score range, and then your personal range. All right. Now let's look at the SSAT reference information, which tells you the percentile and average score for your grade and gender. So the SSAT percentile, which is from one to 99, compares your performance on the SSAT with other students of the same grade and gender who've taken the SSAT in the US and Canada on a standard test date in the previous three years. So that's your norm group. For students who've taken the SSAT more than once, only their first set of scores is included in this norming process. What you see there for your grade and for your grade and gender is the average score for the norm group for each section of the SSAT, so for verbal, quantitative, and reading, as well as your percentile compared to the norm group. So we looked at the scaled scores just a moment ago, and all the scaled scores receive a good deal of attention. The percentile is virtually equivalent and actually a lot more easily understood measure of how um, someone performed on the SSET. Percentiles tell how well you did compared to the other students in the same grade. For example, if a student is in, as we see here, 70th percentile in reading, that means they scored better than 70% of students in their grade level who also took the reading section. Um, and as we can see, this student uh, is a fifth grade female and scored 69 percentile compared to the other women. Okay, so what is a good percentile? Well, that really depends on the school. Different schools have different expectations for applicants. So for one school, being in the 85th percentile in math would put a student way ahead of other applicants. With other schools, this might not be high enough for the applications. So it's important to remember that these percentiles and scaled scores, these test scores, are only one part of a student's overall application. Um, examples of other parts of a successful application include extracurricular activities, grades, diversity, etc. All right, let's move on to the next part of the score report, which is the test question breakdown. So this section provides valuable information about the test content and how well you did on specific types of questions. So as you can see, the verbal is broken down into synonyms and analogies, and you can see what you got right, wrong, and then omitted or unanswered on that section for both synonyms and analogies. Math is broken down into two categories, number concepts and operations, and then algebra, geometry, and other math. For those, again, you can break it down into right, wrong, omitted, see where perhaps you need to study if you're taking the test again. For reading, it's broken down into main idea, and then higher order, which is, um, as you can see, underneath the reading um, category, it defines that for you. It's things like deriving words, meaning of words from context or vocabulary, um, figuring out the meaning of a passage's supporting ideas or inference, or interpreting an author's logic, attitude, and tone. Um, Another thing about the test question breakdown is making sure to compare your wrong answers with your omitted questions. This can tell you if you are perhaps skipping too many questions or if you are guessing too much and maybe should skip a few more if you're not sure of the answer. All right, so those are the different parts of the SSAT score report. Um, as always, we are here to help, so you can visit our site, SSATPracticeTest.com, to view our materials, resources, and tips for preparation. So if you look over the score report and you see um, perhaps 
I'm omitting too many questions. I need strategies for time management, for learning how guessing strategies, elimination, that kind of thing. Um, or if there's a specific type of question that you're missing and you need tips for preparation there, you can always visit our site or contact us. There's our contact info. Um, my name, Erin Lynch. There's Erin at testinnovators.com is my email. And you can also always reach out to our support team, which is support at testinnovators.com um, or at our phone number, which is 1-800-280-1857. Um, and again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, whether you're a parent, student, school administrator, tutor, or anyone else, if you have questions specific to your situation, or if you'd like to talk through the score report in more detail, please don't hesitate to contact us after this webinar. Um, and with that, I don't see that we've had any questions written in, so we will go ahead and end the webinar. Again, if anything comes up later, if you have any questions afterwards, or after you look at your official score report, please don't hesitate to reach out and thank you so much for your time. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful day.